All right, hello everybody. It's 1.30, so we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to this afternoon's Catalyst Day presentations from our Catalyst 300 Applied Innovation Seminar groups. Um, I am going to let the group members here uh, introduce themselves as we go on, um, but I did want to uh, let you know the title of their presentation and their project today, which is a three-step innovative approach to combat environmental injustice. Uh, so thank you all for being with us today uh, to hear from this group of students who's been working hard all semester long on their project. Um, just a little housekeeping stuff. If you have questions that you would like to ask the group that come up for you during the presentation, feel free to put them into the Zoom chat and we will address them uh, when the group's done with their presentation. You'll also have a chance to unmute yourself and ask a question verbally at the end as well. Um, but for now, I will turn things over to the group to introduce themselves and let you know about their project. Go ahead. Hi, everybody. I'm Zach. Hi, everybody. I'm Anita. Hi. I'm Marcus. I'm Bree. And I'm Natalia. And today our group project is called the Argo Gardens Clean View Initiative, and we will be focused on environmental injustice. So before we get into it, what is environmental justice? Uh, environmental injustice can be defined as disproportionate exposure of certain populations to environmental hazards. So in the United States, poor people and African Americans experience higher cancer rates, mortality rates, asthma rates, and overall poorer health than their affluent and current uh, affluent and white counterparts. Uh, we decided to focus on a lower income public housing complex called Argo Gardens in Southeast Chicago. It has been dubbed the toxic donut because it is surrounded by 11 polluting landfills. Um, it was built on an abandoned landfill actually 40 years ago and it has over 6,000 units. And so at the bottom left, you can see a picture of Argo Gardens and then the other two pictures represent the air pollution that the community faces. Why should we care? So there has been a high significance of environmental harm that plagues many communities of color. These low income black and Latinx communities face higher exposure of air pollution than their white and non-Hispanic counterparts. These pollutants have been linked to increased risk of asthma, cardiovascular issues, lung diseases, and even cancer. The sources of these pollutants are in landfills, hazardous waste sites, and other industrial facilities, which are primarily located and low income and or communities of color, specifically black um, and Latinx communities. More than half the people who live within a 1.86 mile radius of a toxic waste facility in the US are communities of color. One specific community that is severely impacted by this is at Grove Gardens, which is surrounded by 11 different polluting facilities. As you can see, this is a map that represents Echo Gardens and the surrounding area. According to Hazel Johnson, a long-term resident of this area, this community has one of the highest concentrations of environmental problems in the country. Data from the city of Chicago shows that this area has some of the highest mortality rates for lung cancer and stroke in the city. And for stroke proximity to these different facilities and exposure to air pollution are strong contributors to the mortality rates. And in addition to high rates of environmentally related diseases, this community has the highest percentage of people living in poverty. In addition, some more health problems faced by this community is asthma, bronchitis, and respiratory diseases. And furthermore, groundwater and many surface waters are highly contaminated and air quality is a major concern. A study reports that this issue is still prevalent because the government is too slow in cleaning up the toxic waste sites and fails to inform the residents of these threats. 
The study also notes that there has been attempts to encourage the construction of federally assisted housing in areas of environmental contamination. However, it only looks at a portion of poor communities, which does not include active gardens. And then lastly, because it is low income and predominantly African American, um, some may have preconceived perceptions preventing them from helping. So one existing solution we found in a community very much like Outgill Gardens is called Clean Up Green Up, first implemented in Los Angeles. Pollution negatively affects many areas to include California and areas of Los Angeles. And one successful environmental justice uh, organization that provides assistance to heavily polluted urban communities in California is called Community for a Better Environment or CBE. This group works to build different skills in organization and leadership, as well as providing legal, scientific, and technical assistance to help these communities decrease the threats to their health. This program hopes to create a society in which production and consumption are based on environmental and social sustainability, where it's held as a basic human right to breathe clean air and drink clean water in the environment which they live in. CBE has been working towards environmental justice for many years, learning ways to combine community organization with legal strategy and strong research to create um, so justice and change. Community organization, legal advocacy, and um, science are their three components that make up their main priorities. And now for our existing solution too. Another existing solution is People for Community Recovery. This solution was incorporated in 1982 and their mission is to improve the quality of life for residents living in the communities affected by environmental pollution. Their goal is to make both corporations and the government accountable to the communities in which they operate. Their programs include toxic tours, environmental programs, employment services, and housing right advocacy. One major critique that our group had in terms of their solution was that it seemed to focus only on long-term goals. They seem to work a lot with the community in terms of trying to establish policies and laws to stop environmental justice, but don't focus much on short-term relief for the individual community. This is where we got the idea to create a multi-step program in which we will now talk about. In general, our innovative solution will work directly with communities struggling with, the with these environmental problems, beginning in Ackwood Gardens. We have developed a three-step program in order to combat this issue. By looking at previous solutions, we thought it would be best to create an integrated approach that both works directly with community members, as well as push for government, government and policy change. Our three steps include educate, rallying, and support. The first component of our solution is to educate. This component includes an educational brochure, care packages, and lesson plans. We have also created a website in order to provide people with an easy way to access all of our educational information, as well as more information about the solution. This component works directly with community members, providing them with information about environmental justice and ways to help them create a healthier environment. Although we do not want to blame or put a burden on the victims, we believe that by educating them in respect to the environment, we can empower them to make a change. Our plan is to go door to door handing out an educational brochure, um, which has six different pages. The first page has information about our team in which we hope will help in gaining the trust of the community members to buy into our solution. We also provided information about the environmental problems in the community um, to persuade the residents to take these steps seriously. The next two pages contain a list of things that they can do within their houses, backyards, and around the community to help reduce air and water pollution, which are two of the biggest concerns in the area. And then a few of the tips include conserving energy by turning off lights, running dishwashers only when they are full, and not using toilets as trash cans. The final page of the brochure is a list of upcoming events that we encourage them all to participate in. Another element is a care package, which we will um, go door, door to door handing out along with the brochures. Since we are working with a low income population, we don't expect them to be able to provide money um, to combat the issues. So we wanted to give them a few um, helpful tips and tools to get them started. 
Um, these tools include face masks and water purifiers. The face masks will help to protect the residents from air pollution, and they'll be made out of recycled or donated fabric. And since we want to uh, start implementing the solution as soon as possible, the face mask will also aid in um, keeping us and them safe during the current pandemic. The other thing in the package are water purifiers, which will be made out of bottles, rocks, sand, charcoal, and cloth. And these purifiers will work to remove materials out of the water that are harmful to the body. Um, we will hold special events for community members as well as volunteers to create these materials for the packages. And we will also post tutorials of how to make these on our website for people that wanna help from home. Another aspect of our education component is lesson plans to be used by the school. Um, we hope that these lessons can educate children about the relevance and importance of the issue within their community and encourage them to help fight for a change. Uh, we compiled a variety of links included on our website to different lessons that we have examined and believe would be beneficial for teachers to implement. We have provided the lesson title, the grade level, the subject area, and an overview of the lesson. And then the next slide is just a picture of our website where you can see this is the main page. And then there's um, a calendar for educators, for supporters, and for community page that they can access. Um, the second component of our solution is rallying the community members to work together to voice concerns about these issues to the government. We will hold weekly meetings as well as other events to get the members to start working together. And each meeting will have different objectives. We will conduct these meetings in an existing building in the community to avoid negative environmental impacts and provide a welcoming space since the residents will be familiar with it. Uh, we hope to collaborate with the PCR in attempt to make further policy change in the community. And one particular event we will use to get the community together is a cleanup event in which residents can recycle and dispose of any materials that are a threat to the health and the environment. We'll get into contact with other local organizations such as Goodwill, Habitat for Humanity, and Salvation Army to see if they would benefit from hosting uh, organized collection event. And we have used a community cleanup guide published by the Department of Natural Resources in order to ensure we have planned the best event. The final portion involves making surrounding communities and others aware of the issue and give them the opportunity to volunteer. We hope to use the power of technology in order to publicly support our organization. Many people who are not directly affected by the, by the harms of these issues don't realize how devastating that they can be. So we hope to share stories, videos, images, and more from those suffering from these issues to reach the hearts of many uh, and persuade them to help fight with us. We will post these stories onto our website in which we will ad advertise for surrounding communities to see. Um, Anisha actually did a sample interview um, and on the slide, we have a sample question and answer. And from this interview, we were able to see an example of how a member of the community is relatively unaware of the environmental issues that affect them every day. And although, although this interview has not experienced any negative effects, she is aware of many people that are. And furthermore, we saw that although we have done research on an existing solution within the community, the interviewee was not aware of this program. Uh, we hope to conduct further interviews like this, as well as collect stories from those directly experiencing these negative effects to share with the public. As far as funding goes, we plan to rely on multiple forms of funding and organizations. We plan to reach out and take a lot of donations, but because we know only doing this could create potential roadblocks, we will also be contacting businesses in the local areas to sponsor us. If a business chooses to sponsor us, they will be featured on a special page of our website that will be promoting their business and thanking them. Another form that we will also be doing is applying to several grants. These will be through the EPA, the Woods Fund of Chicago, and the Crossroads Fund. The EPA awards over $4 billion each year and works to help many visionary organizations to achieve their environmental goals. 
We will be applying to the Woods Fund because they seek to support community organizing and public policy that advances racial equity and economic justice, and their grants range from $15,000 to $55,000. The Crosswoods Fund supports groups working for racial, social, and economic justice in the Chicago metropolitan area. This organization funds groups to budgets under $300,000, and the maximum grant is $10,000. By relying on multiple forms and organizations, we hope to have an adequate amount of funding to support our program and all funding will go towards supplies and resources. Volunteer recruitment will be one of our first priorities. We will reach out to the surrounding schools to try and get their help. And these schools can implement some type of after school club or group where young volunteers to learn about environmental racism, volunteer in a struggling community near them, and hopefully come up with better strategies to handle it. There will be several activities for these programs to get involved in outside of the ones that we've already mentioned in order to gain hours. For example, we will have the Make It Green Day where students will plant different trees, flowers, and grass to overall make all your gardens more green and subsequently increase better air quality. Another event that the students can participate in is Pickup Day. Uh, volunteers will pick up trash in the community to help the community become less dirty. Eventually, we do hope to open up this program to college students who will get interviewed for a paid internship with the program. We would advertise this to many local community colleges surrounding all the gardens. For example, South Suburban, King College, and Olive Harvey College are just few of the community two-year colleges that are within a 25-minute drive of the Olive Garden community. College students will dive deeper into learning about environmental racism within the Olive community by researching, conducting interviews similar to what I did, and talking with local politicians to make them address the problems the community faces also bring in what kind of legislation that could be done and going to elementary, middle, and high schools and teaching the youth how they can directly help their own community. We will also need stationary workers as well or paid employees that will be on the front lines conducting research to provide further evidence that Algo Gardens is in need of actual real change. So these roles will consist of a leader, an event coordinator, and a treasurer. So the leader will um, be in charge of overseeing the entire program and ensuring that it stays successful and runs smoothly. The event coordinator will be in charge of continuing the planning of events within the community, while the treasurer will be responsible for overseeing the budget and funding. We will have an initiative where the stationary workers uh, will be working with health and pharmaceutical companies to get affordable asthma pumps and inhalers to combat the poor air quality surrounding the community. In order to establish sustainability throughout the community, we have to rely on replenishing our physical resources. So we plan to rely on donated materials and materials found throughout the community. Um, we also plan to work with local groups to help advocate for change and grow our movement. So we plan to work with the Chicago Environmental Justice Network, the EPA, the Midwest Environmental Justice Network, and lastly, the Climate Justice Alliance additionally with others. However, we plan to start small and expand outwards, but our ultimate goal is to have the government step in and enforce these environmental injustice policies in order to get these folks in. So in order to analyze whether or not a solution is working successfully we will continuously research and compile data on the pollution rates as well as negative effects um, from the pollution. A report from the American Lung Association in 2019 called State of the Air revealed that Chicago ranked the 18th most polluted city in the, in the nation for ozone pollution. And the 20th annual report found that Chicago had a weighted of 14 um, unhealthy ozone days, uh, which is significantly higher than the last year's report. And if our program is successful, we hope to see a decrease in the average of unhealthy ozone days each year. In research, we found that areas have some of the, um, this area has the highest uh, mortality rates for lung cancer and stroke in the city. These two diseases, as well as diabetes, another illness linked to environmental issues will be used as indicators as whether the Altgel Gardens Clean Initiative is um, successful. On the next slide, the table shown is a condensed version of the data sheet that was published by the Chicago Data Portal, which contained a selection of 27 indicators 
of public health um, significance by the Chicago community area. The condensed version has the mortality rate of the illness per 1,000 people in the community for the city as well as for the US as a whole. Once in the community, we would like to find current rates of asthma within the area since this is also another major issue within the community and has been a result of environmental pollutants. As uh, asthma cases go down and or become more manageable, we know that things are working. We also plan to find current rates of water pollution and collect water samples from the first um, month slash day that we are in the community and um, compare them from uh, one month to six months to nine months. And if the water pollution decreases just as much as 0.5% uh, where it currently is, we know there is a positive trend. When thinking in terms of our success within the community, we want to see an overall decrease in negative health effects that are linked with these environmental exposures. Uh, thank you for listening about to our solution. We will now open it up for questions. Great, thank you very much. Um, audience members, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the Zoom chat. Um, otherwise, uh, you can also unmute yourself and just ask. Um, if I could ask a question, I, I'd like to ask the group, uh, what led you to choose this particular problem in, in this particular place? So actually, um, my dad grew up in the community, and I have family members in this community, and he always told me that like growing up, it was um, like just really bad, like you can smell like the trash, because there's a trash facility there too, and um, you can even like smell like the smog and see the smog and it was just like really bad and he was like I feel like it was called toxic donut something and I remember when he told me that and then I did more research into it and here we are so yeah that's kind of the reason why we did it um specifically that community thanks additional questions I guess I had a question too, so I'm going to jump in with that. Um, so you folks mentioned that you would like to sort of mobilize the um, mobilize a group of volunteers uh, to help and do things. Um, and you mentioned um, student interns, for example, or other things. Um, is one of the things you're thinking about getting volunteers, you know, really from the community itself in order to get buy-in from the rest of the community, or um, like where where might you go if you were looking for volunteers or or again student student interns? Um, did you have any specific ideas about that at this point? Uh, yeah. So for volunteers, we are thinking about uh, primarily getting volunteers from the community so that they can see a lot of these devastating effects. Because um, one of the interviews I did. They realized that there were some effects, but they just weren't educated on exactly what it was. So we think the best way to combat the issue is to get um, volunteers from the community itself as primary and then reaching out to other communities so that people can see this and realize that although Garden uh, needs attention, whether that be news, media, and stuff like that. But first, we would start with doing primary from the community and then reaching out to other people. Great, thank you. Um, I We have gotten a question in the chat, um, and so I'll read it to you. Italia mentioned in one of the existing solutions that there was a cleanup green up ordinance that took place in California. I was wondering how that solution related to the area of Alt Gelt Gardens um, and why it wasn't particularly successful where it was. Oh, well, um, in the area of California, uh, they specifically looked at Los Angeles, and because it's such a big um, it's such a big area, um, they usually like start up a lot of programs uh, focused in on like just the pollution and well the different kinds of pollutions like the water waste and the air. 
but nothing really like gets past um people gathering around and like making um an organization but this organization has been working for over like 35 years and we thought it was um pretty interesting that with a lot of years into working such um such a solution to pollution like nothing was really going on and because um Altgale Gardens is really just like a very small compared to Los Angeles we thought it'd be really easy to implement um a similar situation uh to or a similar um solution to the situation that was happening in outgirl gardens um well yeah <laughs> just because it was a smaller um area than los angeles we thought it'd be really easy to um just like nail um the solution great thanks i think we have time for another question anybody's got one Okay, hearing none, I hope you will join me in thanking our group for presenting today. Again, we had Italia and Zach, Marcus, Bree, and Anisha. Um, thank you all very much for your hard work. It was great to hear about your project. Um, so I encourage everybody, there's a couple more sessions today. Uh, please drop in on another Catalyst 300 presentation later today. Thanks everybody uh, who presented and thanks uh, to everybody in the audience uh, for joining us today. Good job.